Uh, with that, I'd like to introduce our first uh, keynote speaker. So uh, I'll uh, introduce uh, Umer Chubuchu, who is the CEO of Citus Data, and uh, he will be speaking about uh, running uh, Postgres at scale. Umer? Thank you all for being here. Uh, at Citus State, we're huge fans of Postgres, uh, and I'm sure we're not the only ones feeling that way here in this room. Uh, it's the first year we're having this conference, as Josh and Terry said, here in Silicon Valley, and there'll be hiccups along the way. Uh, so please bear with us. Uh, please find me or Josh or any community member uh, if you have any suggestions or questions, and we'll look to make it better. Uh, we've got an exciting lineup of talks uh, today, whether it's Magnus uh, talking about what's new on Postgres 9.5, or Bruce's talk on Postgres in your dataverse, or speakers from TripAdvisor, from Heroku, Square, Amazon, Rackspace. It'll be hard to decide what session to go to. With that, I want to thank you all again for attending the conference, and we have a lot to cover, so let's dive straight in. Um, today, I'm going to talk about what we see in the future of Postgres when it comes to dealing with bigger and bigger data sets. To do that, I want to go back a decade first and look at the database landscape. Databases used to be a lot simpler 10 years ago. On one side, you had your OLTP, your production database, serving the application in real time. And of course, you're using the relational database for that. And on the other extreme, you have data warehousing, your analytics, your offline reporting, BI. And again, you're using the relational database for that as well. Supporting both workloads in the same database management system has been one of the key reasons why relational databases have been so prevalent. And the other reason, of course, is SQL. Uh, this picture changed dramatically with the explosion of data. Not only did data grow, but it grew a lot faster than what silicon could catch up with. Right? So you could no longer just upgrade your way from a single box. You had to have distributed systems in place to deal with this. Uh, and relational did not scale well. It did not scale easily. It did not scale cost effectively. So companies like Google, like Amazon, like Facebook started experimenting with new open source technologies. Now fast forward 10 years to today, and this is the mess that we are in. In the world of distributed systems, you now have a separate database for each separate workload. But those databases are nowhere as complete as what you'd like them to be because they're all being built from scratch. And I'll give you an example. The, uh, let's say you want to build a real-time dashboard on your you know, machine-generated data, your clickstream, your logs. It's a pretty reasonable thing to ask for, right? But the answer is not that simple. Uh, so the data might, for instance, land in Hadoop. You might then enrich it with your user data that's in your production SQL database, your Postgres. Uh, and then you maybe run MapReduce, or these days you run Spark and put all of that back into a NoSQL store or a pre-aggregated operational data store for your application to finally hit that. Uh, and uh, when you think about it, we, why did we actually solve this problem a lot earlier? Uh, in relational databases, it's called materialized views. So in, in a way, things have gotten a lot uh, more difficult. We've regressed, in a way, in how easily we can do these things. And each database here in this picture is its own silo with its own duplicate copy of the data. It's a different set of APIs, right? Requiring different set of skills, people uh, to operate, and a lot of effort uh, to integrate all of it together. So it really is painful. And we've seen this a lot. Uh, this is not what the future of databases look like. What you want is a single DBMS that makes things a lot simpler. That single database has to stand on three pillars. First, it has to run both online analytics and online operations. And let's admit it while it's just us in the room, uh, SQL won this battle uh, decades ago. And, and Postgres itself went through this evolution in the 90s. Right? And as hard as it is to build that unified database, that's just one of the pillars. That's because databases are extremely difficult to get right. We all know that when we go into it, and uh, you need a community of DBAs, developers, and users to build the trust uh, into the database and to have the people and skills to run it. So open source at the heart of that community is critical. That's the second pillar. And you all heard that SQL doesn't scale, uh, right? But it has to scale uh, to meet up with the demands of the data as well as the modern data center. Now, putting all of this together is really difficult, which is why we are in the mess that we are in 
that, that we looked at, each one of these pillars quite literally takes a decade to get right. So how do you go about this? You go back to the relational database, which has nailed two of these pillars, and you make it scale. Postgres is the winning relational database, as Josh was alluding to, on a single node today. And it's in a very unique spot. It has become the default database here in Silicon Valley when starting a new project. It has earned that reputation by building steadily for more than 20 years. It has one of the most mature feature sets of any database out there, including Oracle, for some cases. Its performance is rock solid, both in transactions and in analytics. There's hundreds of community events all over the world driving the project forward. Now, does, this, does that mean it's perfect? Of course not. There is a lot to improve on all fronts. But does that mean it rightfully earns being the world's most advanced open source database? Absolutely. And here we have this giant database. We have this giant community built across thousands of developer years to get these extremely difficult two pieces right. The only thing it doesn't do is scaling out. And that's exactly what we do at Citus Data. We take those two key pillars and we add our core distributed systems expertise on top to make Postgres run in parallel across hundreds of machines for real-time workloads. And think of Citus as Postgres for the new distributed era. You get to keep the control, the power, and the maturity of your favorite relational database, and you get to scale it to petabytes of data just by provisioning the machines. And instead of starting from scratch, you get to keep all your expertise, all your people, and you get the amazing features that Postgres has to offer. We do this in a way that no other database in the world does. And that is without forking from the core. When you fork, it diverges from the community, that extremely hard-earned second pillar. Uh, what we have here instead is an extension of the database, which leaves Postgres completely intact at its core. And when it's not a fork, users, of course, get the latest version of Postgres, and developers work, or can work on the latest branch. And what makes not forking possible are the extension APIs that Postgres published with 9.1 just a few years ago. These APIs are really powerful. Uh, and even as I've grossly oversimplified them here on the slide, uh, they really mean a lot. And no other database in the world has this capability. Not Oracle, not MySQL, and definitely not MongoDB. Uh, and those same extension APIs also give us a very powerful framework to package Citus. So with that, I have two exciting announcements today uh, that I want to share with you. The first is we package the next version of Citus DB 5.0 as an extension of PostgreSQL. So that means you can transform Postgres into a distributed database just by saying create extension Citus DB. That'll give you real-time inserts, updates, together with multi-core parallel analytics on a cluster of regular Postgres machines. Citus 5.0 will be compatible with Postgres 9.5. You can sign up for the private beta starting today. Uh, and ex as excited as we are about this, the second news, I think, is even more exciting. Uh, and that is CytusDB going open source. Cool. For those of you who are familiar, we've had some components of Citus already out in the open, uh, including PG Shard, C Store, FTW. Uh, we've received tons of great feedback uh, from, from many of you, uh, and we're really excited to open source Citus, and where else, where better else to do it right here with all of you. Uh, it is going to be available uh, the first quarter of 2016, uh, so that's fairly soon, uh, and to give you a much better idea of what that means uh, and what you can do with Citus, uh, I'd like to invite our CTO, Özgün Erdoğan, to the stage. Switch over to the demo. Nope, definitely not exit. Okay, cool. Hey, I'm Özgün, and I'm excited to demo a pre release of Citus DB 5.0. Uh, Citus 5.0 extends PostgreSQL for sharding, replication, query routing 
and query parallelization without forking Postgres. For this demo, we started up 20 EC2 instances on AWS. Here you can see the EC2 instances. Each one of these instances has Postgres 9.4 installed. We also installed the Citus DB extension to make Postgres SQL a distributed database. I'll now log into one of these instances and run PC equal to connect to Postgres 9.4. I'll do a backslash DX to show the Citus DB extension installed on this Postgres instance. We also created several Postgres SQL tables uh, on this instance ahead of time. We then distributed these tables and loaded close to a billion records to this distributed database. Here's a list of tables in the cluster, and here's an example table schema. Now, let's run an example query. I'll go, loop, and then this example query goes over all the orders in the table and specifically gives you back the amount of business that was built, shipped, and returned. On a regular PostgreSQL instance with plenty of memory, this query goes over 600 million records and then completes in about 12 minutes. Or here, when we run this query, Citus realizes that the query operates on a distributed table, parallelizes the query to run across the machines in the cluster, merges the results from each machine, and gives the merge results back to the user in 14 seconds. The idea here is that Citus is able to scale out analytic queries across the nodes in the cluster, one, in a linear fashion, and two, without forking Postgres. Now I'm going to... Now I'm going to switch gears a bit, and I'm going to run an example insert query into this distributed table. The query looks like the following. And next I'm going to scale these insert queries too using the PG Bench benchmarking tool. For this, I'm going to run the following query. Command. And uh, this command connects to all the nodes in the cluster and asks pgbench to run concurrent insert statements on the distributed table. Since insert queries themselves are issued to a distributed table, Citus behind the covers transparently runs the query to the appropriate shards in the cluster. The benchmark results are displayed per node. And then the, in here, the results show that we are able to insert 12,000 records per second to this table from every node in the cluster for a total throughput of 240,000 inserts per second. And the key idea here is that we are able to scale insert update statements too across this cluster without forking Postgres. Finally, we have enough memory on this cluster itself to hold the entire data set. Let's see what happens when we run this OLTP benchmark. And the analytics query itself on the same cluster at the same time using the same database. So these are going on together at the same time. And as you see, both these queries complete with similar performance. We see that Citus can scale out both insert update statements and analytic queries across the cluster. In fact, here's how the scaling behavior looks when we run the benchmarks over a longer period of time. Could we switch to the presentation? Next. Cool. On the left, you have the insert update statements that we ran in our benchmark. These are your very short, fast operations. You would have saw, and now you would have seen solutions talk about scalability here. You add more nodes, you get more throughput. And that's what you get with Citus. And on the right is your analytics. This is your real-time insights from your data. Uh, you might have seen products talk about parallelizing queries here. And that's exactly what you are seeing. These are real numbers, and they are scaling almost perfectly on a straight time, a line. 10 times the number of machines, 10 times faster the queries. Now, what you haven't seen is getting these numbers simultaneously on the same cluster. And that's what we have here. You are getting your blazing fast analytics as you're ingesting your data into the cluster in real time on the same database. To recap, 
Citus 5.0 scales out both real-time operations and analytic queries. And it's the first distributed database that doesn't fork the underlying database. Citus uses the extension APIs to integrate seamlessly with Postgres. This way, Postgres 9.4 has JSONB, you get distributed JSONB queries running on Citus. 9.5 comes with upserts, and there you have that functionality. And it's going to be open source for everyone to use. If you are interested, please say, sign up for the Citus DB 5.0 using the following link today. We are very excited about these announcements, and we are looking to hearing from you throughout the day. Thank you.